Perfect, perfect. So, guys, we got news coming in five minutes. We're going to wait for that for sure. Uh, we got existing home sales coming uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. We already had two news releases this morning uh, pre-market, and they were basically a wash. We had one that was bearish for the indices, one that was bullish for the indices. Uh, unemployment claims is obviously um, higher impact. But if we take a look at the chart, here's what we can see based on what the chart is showing us. These are the setups from yesterday PM session. If you guys weren't on, we basically got left behind uh, on both. Never gave our fair, fair value gap entries uh, on either one of these, but both targets were, were hit. So uh, one of those days. So uh, here we go. But anyway, here is the uh, low from yesterday, basically right after market close. This was actually right before Asia session. So um, it was the 15 minute candle right before Asia. So I guess I'll consider this the Asia low. Got taken out here. So it took out the London and Asia low. Uh, and this moved down uh, this morning right before market open. And we just took out the London high as well. A couple of areas I wanted to mark out here was this volume imbalance, which we just tapped into after taking out these highs. So I am still um, bullish overall. We did have a one hour bearish market structure shift. If we jump up here to the one hour time frame, of course, everybody's hopping in the call now. Um, if we jump up to the one hour time frame, here's our one hour market structure shift. When we finally took out this sell side liquidity with a strong body close with displacement, this is my one hour market structure shift right here on the, yeah, the one hour time frame. So bearish market structure shift. And I will actually go ahead and, mm, yeah, I guess we can we can delete this opening range gap low uh, and this opening range gap high because these are all been traded back to multiple different times now. But yeah, so I am still bearish overall. Okay, so on a higher time frame perspective, I am still bearish. Uh, you know, we rallied 200 points up on ES over the last, I mean, I don't even know, was it the last week or two, week and a half at least. So. We've rallied up 200 points. We have all sorts of sell side, all sorts of inefficiencies to the downside, opening range gaps that weren't weren't filled, new week opening gaps that haven't been traded back to. Um, so for me, I am still bearish overall. This one hour market structure shift um, gave me some more confidence in that. However, obviously we took out the, again, the Asia and London lows right here, and then we pushed up and now we took out the uh, highs. We filled the opening range gap from today, filled this volume imbalance. So now, as long as we get the reaction to the downside that we would like to see, then I'm all for getting shorts. Uh, I didn't know if we were going to displace through here. We'll have to see how the news how the news reacts. The news could come out and push us even higher. There is one tiny little um, fair value gap up here on the 15 minute time frame, which also exists on the smaller time frames. That was actually uh, all inside that same fair value gap that we were trying to catch, getting short at the end of PM session yesterday. So I do think this is a possibility. Uh, I don't think it's a necessity. And like I said, I think that we have a lot of room to correct um, to the downside. So I'm going to stick with my with my bearish bias for for right now until until something changes. So that is my plan. We'll see how this news comes out in 45 seconds. Why don't we go ahead and drop her down to these slightly smaller time frames? But yes, we took out the high. We filled the liquidity void. And at this point, as long as we get some nice displacement down, market structure shifts, uh, we'll be good to go, which this news should either create or it's gonna create another run on liquidity. Excuse me, 20 seconds. And then yeah, looking to target obviously recent lows uh, and then all the inefficiencies and sell side that have been there for the last week. And then we don't have any news tomorrow. We don't have any news tomorrow. So I would expect a I would expect a slightly larger range today than tomorrow. I think we'll still see mo good movement tomorrow, but All right, we're still pending. What's the chart doing? Nothing. All right. So we came out bullish. Uh, for the indices. Keep in mind, both of these bullish news releases uh, were medium, and our high impact, only a high impact was uh, bearish. 
bearish for the indices. Um, so I'm gonna stick with what the chart is showing me. This is my market structure shift right here. Let's see what this looks like on the two minute, yeah. One minute, two minute, this, this swing low right here is what led to this push up to grab liquidity. Also, uh, did this happen? No, it didn't. We're in the macro right now. This happened just before the macro. And let's see if we got any... Oh, wow, look at NQ. We got SMT with, with Dow Jones, it looks like. Fantastic. Fantastic. Just checking out these other time frames. Um, nothing really. There we go. How about that? All right, guys. Bottoms up. <laughs> I'm gonna get short in that in that gap on the next candle. I want to let this candle close though. Let this candle close. If it just wicks up there quick, don't don't enter. We got 20 seconds. Everybody remain calm. I'm gonna go stop above the high. Four and a half handles. I'm trying to set up my order so I'm ready to go and then I'm gonna try to send this in the uh, discord <clears throat> um, 90 is my looking to be my entry on the futures chart and then 18 ticks for a stop loss and then at least 43 ticks for a TP sell limit boom all right, so I set my sell limit order up, guys. I'm gonna try to market execute on MetaTrader here. I'm trying to send this in the Discord. This is coming fast. Uh... All right, let me send this quick. But yeah, all the reasons for the trade, took a buy side, London highs, filled the opening range gap, filled into the, the liquidity void, displaced lower with a market structure shift, fair value gap entry, textbook setup. Come get us. Don't be... We have not, we have not entered this fair value gap yet. We have SMT with Dow Jones, and obviously NQ is just absolutely melting right now. Please do not leave without us. I am so sick of that happening this week. Pretty sick of getting left behind this week. <laughs> NQ took out the low already. Also, no entries, no fair value gap entries offered. Here's the nine o'clock handle, displaced down. See you later. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> Like, is there someone I can write a letter to? In all reality, I I would kind of like to see this five-minute candle since we're already down here. We're already inside this gap, this bullish gap. I mean, I, I kind of would like to see it close strong. I would hate to see it, like, really, you know, wick up fast because it would, it would kind of give me the the notion that this, this bullish for value gap might hold and that we could make another push higher, especially since NQ already took out the low. But we do have some pretty, I mean... Pretty prominent SMT here with Dow Jones. And I really do like the setup. I am pretty convicted that we're going to be headed lower for lower prices. So in an ideal world, I would like to see this kind of hold strong and then obviously come back for us. In a not so ideal world, we'd kind of wick through this low and then start retracing again. At that point, I feel like we'd be better off maybe deleting this and then perhaps waiting for another setup. But... Well, I guess we're seeing everything correctly. That's nice. Until we really get down into some levels of discount, I'm I'm still bearish overall. Um, here's my issue. This is obviously yes breaker for a value gap lined up with it. Yes. Problem is, is there's so many inefficiencies up here yet in this range that I wouldn't want to just enter right off the bat here. Like this would be 
another area where I'd like to see confirmation. Otherwise, I still think our best bet would be wait for these higher up for value gaps. We could either we could keep the same entry, view this as a break of structure lower, view this as our uh, lower high, keep this entry here, and then worst case scenario, price only comes up to maybe 50% of this gap, let's just say, and then we start moving away again. We then look to get in again on a one minute, but either way, we'd be waiting for confirmations, you know, here or here. And then here we can kind of just fire at will because this would be the very last fair value gap with the most confluence in premium probably at this point now at the very highest point of that uh, OTE. So yeah, I mean, it sucks. I get it. You know, obviously, you know, people pay for these sessions. I know you guys want trades. It's not, you know, you don't, you sign up to learn, but let's be real. You didn't sign up. You signed up also to, to trade. That's just, that's, that's the honest truth. So when you have a whole week goes by and it's like, you're missing all these great trades, you know, it's frustrating. I understand. But this is also the reality of trading in my, in my best experience, you know, and who knows, maybe, maybe in a year I'll graduate to a level of better understanding to where, you know what I mean? Maybe maybe I'll be able to identify these types of market conditions, and you know, it'll it'll result in uh, in less less missed opportunities. But you're always going to have missed opportunities. You're never going to be perfect. You're never going to catch them all. You're not Ash catching from Pokemon. You're not going to catch them all. So, but yeah, consistency. That's that's what everybody's chasing in trading. It is consistency. Everybody has consistency in, in like the bad habits. 95% of the traders have consistency in that. I had the best consistency in that you'd ever see. I mean, I, I could tell you guys story after story of like kind of what I just, you know, narrated to you guys of just like you talking to your friends and like you say you're not going to make those mistakes again and then the next minute you're looking in front of your account again. Like, I've did that more times than I could even count. Like I, that was just normal for me. That's just what I did. I knew how to I knew how to fund those forex brokers with Bitcoin better than anybody. But yeah, eventually, the, the, I mean, and you're gonna make those mistakes until it hurts bad enough. And that first, ho hopefully, for some people. But that I mean, it could look really ugly for some people. And. Um, you know, I never let it get really ugly in the moment. I would say in hindsight, looking back, like cumulatively, like I was like, damn, I actually like did some damage. <sighs> um, and the hardest part was like trying to unlearn all that because I just subconsciously wired my brain to um, have bad habits. So it took a lot of took a lot of undoing, but I think the only way you're going to undo that is just through, I mean... It doesn't feel like you're doing anything by not pressing the button, but you are doing something. You're controlling yourself. So it's kind of like, kind of like uh, baseball, right? So in baseball, you can sit and wait on your perfect pitch. However, if you don't swing at strikes, you'll get struck out. The beautiful part about trading is you're never going to strike out. You're never going to strike out. You could sit here and wait pitch after pitch after pitch after pitch until you get the one that's like, Everything is perfect. Everything is right. The timing, the entry, the risk management, and swing at that one. And maybe that's very few trades in a week for you at first. Right? And then as you get a little bit better at your swing, maybe you can start, you know, opening up that strike zone for you or that perfect pitch zone and swing at a little bit more stuff. And, uh, yeah, it took me a while. It took me, it took me probably all of, like, two years to, like, really get a bearing on just <laughs> self-control. Um, that's probably the biggest thing I would say. That's the thing that's going to hurt you the most. It's not so much the strategy. I mean, the strategy is fine and all, but you'll, you'll, I mean, you can always have a decent strategy that will work. It doesn't have to be smart money either. I mean, see, and this is exactly, this is exactly why I didn't take Dow. Structure still bullish AF. That's really it. So the things that I would anticipate The things that I would anticipate would be maybe, now that we've tapped into equilibrium here, 
this could be the only thing very short term is if we got a two minute marker structure shift with displacement here. Um, that'd be the only thing, but it'd be, it'd be high. It, it's, it is higher risk in my opinion. The much higher probability setup is going to be the actual retracement on NQ to this level. This is a very shallow retracement on NQ. This is not even close to anything that's a premium. So that's why I don't really trust this right now on ES. I have a feeling this is going to end up being inducement for anybody that's just been itching to get on get in on this move. I, I think that I think this won't end well for them. Could be wrong, but that's what I think. And then I think this is going to capitulate back up. At that point, I think Dow will actually probably be ready to maybe turn for good. At least that's what I would expect. And then, you know, in the meantime, I would expect either our entry to get picked up uh, or if not, then I would expect you know, maybe we get this uh, fair value gap to give some sort of a schematic out of it. So, you know, maybe we even get this. But then it, you know, just kind of capitulates higher. Oh. Something like that. And maybe maybe a little wick picks us up, and if not, we'd have to look to re-enter here after we get this placement market structure shift. Boom. This is good. We'll wait for potentially this type of a setup to play out, and maybe just get triggered in on our limit order. Um. Otherwise, yeah, here, wait for a new setup, and um, yeah, we've got pretty hefty. Uh, yet again, market structure shift here on the 15, and even the um, the one hour already obviously happened. This was the one hour market structure shift. Everything else is just, you know, I guess a true break of structure after that. Liquidity run, market structure shift with displacement. So, and we've got more levels of sell side to go to go take out. So, hopefully, we can get picked up on something yet. And then we've got obviously lunch in 40 minutes. So, you know, we'll see where we're at timing wise with like lunch and whatnot. I, I'm definitely not opposed to getting long today, but the only way I'm getting long is if, again, we're reacting after coming down to levels of, um, of discount. And to me, any sort of long position most likely won't be um, like a big move, it would be more so like we'll, we'll squeeze 10 handles out of it and get out. So that's that's my thought process right now. But keep an eye on this, guys. We'll see if I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think this will end up being inducement for people um, that are trying to get in on the move. Um, and then we'll see where we are at. All right, what is going on, YouTube? So just making this little update video um to add to the recording we did end up catching the trade so didn't delete the limit order came back picked this up right at 45.90 i did record it or i was trying to record it but i got a notification pop up like three minutes in saying that my disk storage was full so therefore i never ended up saving it um but anyway i'll show you guys this just to show you guys i'm not like making it up that i caught the trade so here's my top step account here's my orders from today as you can see, sell limit was filled, 45.90, which is right where this is, 45.90, and then I took two um, partial profits. So I didn't let it all hit at one. I took one out. They weren't far apart. 79.25, so a little, almost 11 handles there on the first contract, and then almost 13 handles here on the second one, which was our TP2. So as you guys can see here, we entered. My sell limit got triggered. This was TP1 on my MetaTrader, so I took a partial here, about a third of my position. This was just 10 handles, didn't do anything with this. And then uh, this was TP2, so I took another partial on MetaTrader. And then as far as top step goes, I sold, or I bought one contract back at 77.25, was it? Or 79.25 was the first one, so right here. And then second one was right down here at TP, as TP2 got hit. And then it kind of bounced up right here, and that's where I got filled one tick higher. 
So that was uh, the trade for today. I'm still in. I still have a runner to TP3. My stop is in profit at five handles. So either I'm going to stop the rest of the way out at five handles TP1, or I'm going to hit full take profit. So you guys can keep an eye on that in your own time. I'll show you guys the Discord just to show you that it was called out. Um, called it out this morning. Never canceled it. I said that on the Zoom call I wasn't canceling it. TP1, TP2. Here's where TP3 is. Oops. Uh, and then, yeah, here's the chat of everyone saying... That they got filled. Sell them. It just hit me into. I'm in. Hey, me too. And then basically we're just having fun as TPs were getting hit along the way. But yeah, good trade today. Let me know if you guys caught it. it feels good to actually catch the trade finally and not get left behind for once. Um, so happy about that. Hope you guys have an amazing Thursday. And I shouldn't have any more issues with this space. I wouldn't freed up a bunch of it. So we should be good to go from this point forward. Have an amazing Thursday, guys. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.